I want to welcome you back. I call the convention back to order. It is my privilege to address you at this time about the state of the diocese. to each of you and to especially the uh, many people who have reached out over the last year to help and support one another. There's no doubt that we are in a challenging time. And so the words emerging in love sound very hopeful and aspirational, and they are for good reason. We are emerging. But as the word suggests of movement, of going from one thing to another, to emerge is to go from a space out and has a real sense of expansiveness in it. And in this time, I don't know about you personally, but many people are finding this to be a time when they don't feel like going out at all. There's a sense of weariness, tiredness and fatigue of wanting to retreat from the challenges of this time. And so this convention is offered as in much as it can be a retreat, a time for soulful and intentional thought together. To come together, not only for prayer and conversation, but to nominate one another, to do the work of the church, to be reminded that what we're called together to do by God is significant and important and the life of the kingdom of God. I am asked all the time, do I, what do I think about the future of the church? What do I think the future of the church will be? Is there hope for the church? And I will say very positively, yes, there's great hope. And the future of the church is not something we can know definitively. In fact, I think our desire to know has really handicapped us, hasn't it? We're so busy trying to know, trying to understand, that to live by faith and to let go and allow God's presence in us to fill us and move us is a difficult thing to access at times. But knowing is killing us. Our faith is not about a knowing as much as it is about a faith, a believing, a stepping out in faith. And so over this last year, we have done a lot of stepping out in faith. We have had speak faith where we've learned to use our voices and our words to speak about God. We have had book clubs and book studies about anti-racism and we've talked about anti-racism and we've begun to do the necessary work to address the inequalities for people around us. And we have argued with one another and some of those arguments have been very positive in that it's allowed us to seek deeper understanding. And some have not been. They've called, uh, forced us apart and we've lost our way a bit. We've gotten confused and we've gotten really lost in the divisions within and around us. But one of the things about emerging in love is that we know what it is we're to be about, which is to be about love. And what can that possibly mean in this time of hurt and anguish? Love is more than a fancy or feeling, the poet would tell us. Love is more than just a, a lofty idea or a vague hope. Love is a person on a cross, our savior offering. Love is a husband caring for his wife or a wife caring for her husband or children or loved ones. Each of us has an opportunity to be part of what God is doing. So as we emerge in love, we're emerging with a message of hope and willing hearts to serve God and in serving God, to discover God within ourselves. Now I have, I'm going to do something that is, I feel certain I will fail at doing, but I'm going to do it anyway, because already the sound quality wasn't great when we sang. So Obviously, perfection is really not uh, all that's cracked up to be. And I would say that, um, that if we're looking for perfection, we're, we're, that's just not our calling. We're called to faithfulness, not um, perfection. But I'm going to share my screen, hopefully. Because one of the things this year, this last year, we talked a lot about anti-racism. And this year, we're going to continue to talk about anti-racism as we shine the light and focus in a new way as we emerge on climate care. 
Now notice I say climate care. There's been a lot of um, energy spent on whether or not climate change is man-made or not, or people agree with it or don't agree with it. We've somehow gotten this idea that agreeing with something is all that matters. And for us as followers of Jesus, we know that is not the case. The most important thing is to be faithful people who are offering love and comfort to this world. This is an image of a young girl in India after a flood going back home and leaping across water that's filled with all sorts of things. A young boy in Bolivia in 2008 outside his home. Children in Argentina getting water from a river where you can see behind the industrialization. These pictures are my own, or one of them is. The one on the left with the red line is where this glacier was in 2000. The sign says 2005. And then on the right, you can see that, uh, that has, it, it has continued to diminish even in two years. Now, the woman on the left in this picture, Delmira de Jesus Cortez Barrera, she is from a family in El, in El Salvador, and they were sustainable farmers. They were had making their livelihood. But then seasons changed, and it began to flood and famine and, and drought. And she now lives in San, San Salvador and, and works at a pupusa shop. Um, she makes $200 a month. She pays $65 in rent and sends $95 back to her family. And it's getting worse and more challenging, as many of you know, in, in, our, in our sister diocese. She's in our sister diocese. This is a family in Guatemala. This farmer farms corn. And he's tried soy. And again, the flooding and then the drought, you can see that his corn crop has failed. It is estimated by 2070 that the world's corn production will diminish by as much as 40% in the places that are red, by 30% in those where it's orange. These are livelihoods, people living. Now, what does that have to do with us in central New York? These slides are slides of the fire in Oregon and the fire in California. And you can see this NASA photo of the vertical integrated smoke, meaning the smoke that's blowing. And if you remember this past summer, those days where it was hazy and almost sort of red, this is why the smoke from the fires in Oregon and California were our air, were, our, uh, were causing problems for our breathing. And that stagnant air since 1973 has only increased by 15%. And by stagnant air, it means that the particulates are held closer to the ground where they cause more respiratory illness. And that is our air. And then there's a study from the University of Albany that I found interesting. And I'll tell you, it took me a little while to learn how to read this map. Because if you see at the top, the gray part is the weather, what the weather was like in 1961 to 1990, which is basically your real central New York weather. Those good snowy winters, those uh, short springs. But now you can see that in 2010 to 2039, it's expected that our weather is a bit more like Pennsylvania or moving down uh, to Southern Pennsylvania. By 2040, we'll move even further South as if our weather by 2070 were actually the weather of South Carolina or Georgia. And just in case you're wondering, it doesn't mean we won't have snow. It's just the polar vortex coming in will be when we have snow. So there'll be huge vacillations between deep snow and, and very warm, humid, summers. So what does this have to do with the gospel of Jesus? And what does this have to do with our work as a diocese? Everything, everything. Our call as people of Jesus is to love God and to love our neighbors as ourselves. Our mission statement in the diocese is still one of the things I'm most proud of because it shows our vulnerability and our resiliency and our willingness to learn that we're learning to love God, one another, and all God's creation. It is not so much about whether we agree or disagree. It's about us recognizing that something is happening that's harming other people. 
And these charts, the first of them, were not from the future. Those were from the past. Those are the changes over the past. And whatever our reason or whatever we think the changes are, are about, the point is how we live with our neighbors in this time. In this time when so much partisan is driving us apart. So in the diocese, we've done a lot of good work over this last year, having conversations and creating space and learning new skills. We've done a lot of beautiful work together of resiliency in a very challenging time. Some of you having reduced numbers in church, wondering what the church is going to be like, who will come back, who will go, and how do we proclaim the gospel of Jesus? The good news of the gospel of Jesus is always relevant, is always important in this time. So one of the ways we proclaim the gospel of Jesus is in caring for one another. And so for those of us who are hurting, reaching out to our friends and families and loved ones at church, and for those who feel inspired to help people around us, there is so much we can do. We have so much good news to share. In this last year, I've been inspired by the parishes who have met online and learned to do ministry in new ways, by parishes that have redone their finances and figured out how to live within their means in a new way, to change what they're doing, parishes that have started ministries because they're excited about doing something new. It is so true that what has been cannot continue to be. It is a time of change. So when we think about that emerging in love and going from one thing to another, we need to refrain from thinking, whew, that's over. We're coming out of COVID, and so we're done. We're coming out of COVID stronger, more resilient, more capable. We're coming out of this time of pandemic to know more about what makes us the body of Jesus. It is not all of the things we had thought it was before. For many of us, we've discovered the truth of the gospel in our own life, in our own heart. We've discovered that the love of God is made manifest when we call each other by phone, when we meet on Zoom, when we reach out with ways of supporting our neighbors with gift boxes and, and things that we leave on one another's porch as an encouragement. We have seen our chaplains work so faithfully at the hospitals, and we have learned that supporting one another also means sending thank you gifts to our local nurses, doctors, and caregivers. And we have grieved, and we have been sad, and we've learned to do that together as well. Maybe we're a little bit more honest. Maybe we're a little bit more inspired, because throughout it all, through the challenges of the last year, we have become a stronger diocese. I am so grateful and proud to serve with you. And I'm so grateful for each of you and the part you play in making this diocese such a special, wonderful place to be. We have so much love to share and it is time for us to emerge, to emerge out of our self-doubt, to emerge out of our worry that we're not enough and to recognize that it, God in us is enough. So thank you for all you're doing in our diocese and the world. And may God's love emerge in us. And may we find Jesus not only in serving, but in each aspect of our lives. God bless you and God keep you. Thank you. <laughs>